According to Bandura's social learning theory, learning occurs through observations and interactions with other people. As part of his theory, Bandura conducted an experiment in 1961 in order to observe if social behaviors can be acquired through the process of imitation and observation, with the behavior in question being aggression. The experiment involved exposing children to two different adult models, an aggressive model and a non-aggressive one. After witnessing the adult's behavior, the children would then be placed in a room without the model and were observed to see if they would imitate the behaviors they had witnessed earlier. The participants for the experiment were 36 boys and 36 girls, whose ages ranged from 3 to 6 years old. They were split into three groups, a control group which received no treatment, a group that was exposed to aggressive models, and a group that was exposed to non-aggressive models. Later on, they were also divided into groups based on gender, so that half of the participants were exposed to a same-sex adult model, and the other half were exposed to an opposite-sex adult model. Each child was then tested individually to ensure that behavior would not be influenced by other children. The child was first brought into a playroom where there were a number of different activities to explore. The experimenter then invited an adult model into the playroom and encouraged the model to sit at the table and join in the activities. Over a 10-minute period, the adult models began to play with sets of tinker toys. In the non-aggressive condition, the adult model simply played with the toy and ignored the Bobo doll for the entire period. In the aggressive model condition, however, the adult models would violently attack the Bobo doll. The model laid the Bobo doll on its side, sat on it, and punched it repeatedly in the nose. The model then raised the Bobo doll, picked up the mallet, and struck the doll in the head. Following the mallet aggression, the model tossed the doll up in the air aggressively and kicked it about the room. In addition to physical aggression, the adult models also used verbally aggressive phrases such as kick him and sock him in the nose. The models also added two non-aggressive phrases. He sure is a tough fella and he keeps coming back for more. After the 10 minute exposure to the adult model, each child was then taken to another room that contained a number of appealing toys, including a doll set, fire engine, and toy airplane. However, children were then told that they were not allowed to play with any of these tempting toys. The purpose of this was to build up frustration levels among the young participants. Finally, each child was taken to the last experimentation room. This room contained a number of aggressive toys, including a mullet, a titter ball with a face painted on it, dart guns, and, of course, a bobo doll. The room also included several non-aggressive toys, including crayons, paper, dolls, plastic animals, and trucks. Each child was then allowed to play in this room for a period of 20 minutes, while raters observed the child's behavior from behind a one-way mirror and judged each child's level of aggression. The main findings of this experiment were as follows. The children in the aggressive model condition made more aggressive responses than the children in the non-aggressive condition. Boys made more aggressive responses than girls. Boys in the aggressive model condition showed more aggressive responses if the model was a male than if the model was a female. And finally, that girls in the aggressive model conditions also showed more physical aggressive responses if the model was male but more verbal aggressive responses if the model was female. These findings support Pandura's social learning theory. That is, children learn social behavior such as aggression through the process of observational learning or through watching the behavior of another person. Central to the social learning theory is the identification of which types of models are more likely to be imitated. In the study, it was found that aggressive male models were more likely to be imitated than aggressive female models. One probable reason for this is to do with sex roles. Perhaps it is more acceptable in Western culture for men to be more aggressive than women, and even by 3 or 4 years of age, children are learning the dominant stereotypes that relate to sex role differences. So aggressive male models are more likely to be imitated since this is seen by the child as more fitting or appropriate for men than for women. Bandura also found that boys were more likely to imitate the aggressive male model than the female role model. Perhaps the greater relevance of the male model's behavior for boys lies in the fact that boys perceive the similarity between themselves and the model. 
Bandura therefore found that similarity between the model and the child is another important factor. The perception of the similarity is based upon development of the child's gender identity or their ability to classify themselves and others as a girl or a boy, female or male. The first stage of this ability is not usually reached until two to two and a half years old of age. Bandura has carried out many other studies, not just on aggression. For example, warm and friendly adults are more likely to be imitated than unfriendly ones. And also that more powerful models are more readily imitated and that adults who are seen to be rewarded for their behavior are more likely to be imitated. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, just give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And stay tuned for more videos like this one.